When I told a few people that I was coming to speak at this event and um, they asked me what it was about and I said, oh, it's, it's the topic is the book that changed me. And a number of people, in fact, all of them responded with, oh, well, so obviously you'll be doing the Quran. And I said, well, believe it or not, Muslims actually do occasionally read other things like 19th century historical French novels that eventually become award-winning musicals. And that's what I'll be talking to you about tonight and particularly uh, a specific scene in the book uh, that profoundly changed one of the characters and profoundly changed me. I don't remember the first time I read Les Miserables, but I do remember, it's, what I do remember is how deeply a particular scene in the book affected me. It's an exchange between two characters that was so unexpected and such an example of how someone can exemplify audacious grace that I couldn't stop turning it over in my head for days afterwards. Even now, I often reflect on that moment and what I can learn from it. Many of you would be familiar with Les Miserables, but for those of you who haven't read it or maybe seen the musical, I'll give you the backstory to this scene. One of the key protagonists is a man called Jean Valjean. We're introduced to him uh, when he is a prisoner who has been in a horrendous jail for 19 years. He was initially jailed for stealing a loaf of bread for his sister's starving child. And then he's kept in jail for many years after that uh, because he tried to escape. When he is finally freed, the prison gives him less money than he is owed as part of his release package. When he tries to find work, the bosses pay him less than others because he is a former convict. At every turn, people are exploiting him and robbing him. They're dehumanising him. One night, hungry and despondent, he stumbles across a bishop's home. And the kindly bishop takes him in, gives him a meal and a bed. But in the middle of the night, the desperate Jean Valjean steals some silverware from the bishop and he escapes through the garden. The excerpt that I'm going to read you now is what happened next. A knock sounded on the door and the bishop called, come in. The door opened to disclose a dramatic group. Three men were holding a fourth by the arms and neck. Three were soldiers and the fourth was Jean Valjean. A sergeant of the soldiers who had been standing by the door and was evidently in charge of the party entered the room and saluted. Mon Monseigneur, he began. Valjean was looking crushed and woebegone. The bishop was meanwhile coming towards them as rapidly as his age allowed. So here you are, he cried to Jean Valjean. I'm delighted to see you. Had you forgotten that I gave you the candlesticks as well? They're silver like the rest and worth a good 200 francs. Did you forget to take them? Jean Valjean's eyes widened. He was now staring at the old man with an expression that no words could convey. Monseigneur, said the sergeant, do I understand that this man was telling the truth? When we saw him, he seemed to be on the run and we thought we'd better make sure. We found this silver in his knapsack. And he told you, said the bishop smiling, that it had been given to him by an old priest with whom he stopped the night. I can see how it was. You felt bound to bring him here, but you were mistaken. You mean, said the sergeant, that we can let him go? Certainly, said the bishop. The soldiers released Valjean, who seemed to cringe. Am I really allowed to go, he said, mumbling the words as if he were talking in his sleep. You heard, didn't you, said the soldier. But this time, said the bishop, you must not forget your candlesticks. He fetched them from the mantelpiece and handed them to Jean Valjean. Valjean was trembling. He took the candlesticks mechanically and with a distracted air. And now, said the bishop, go in peace. Incidentally, my friend, when you next come here, you don't need to go through the garden. This door is never locked. He turned to the soldiers. Thank you, gentlemen. The soldiers withdrew. Valjean stayed motionless as though he were on the verge of collapse. I find this scene so affecting because it flies in the face of so much human interaction. So much of the way that we deal with each other is about revenge, 
about my rights, about just consequences and people getting their just desserts. It's about knee-jerk responses and reminding people who's the boss and where their place is. The bishop would have been completely in his rights in the moment that the soldiers brought Jean Valjean to him to say, I showed you nothing but kindness and this is how you repay me? By stealing from me? But instead, instantly, he gave him a way out and he gives him even more, more than he took and more than he deserves. And in that brief, undeserved exchange in the kitchen, the bishop's response restores Valjean's humanity. He did all this not knowing what could happen next. As the story goes on, we discover that this is the moment that Jean Valjean turns his life around. And it was this one moment of compassionate hope that changes the trajectory of his existence. But the bishop wouldn't have known that. For all he knew, Jean Valjean would be back the next night to rob him again. And that's another reason why I found this book so life-changing. Because the bishop willingly chose a response that was full of kindness, regardless of the response. The bishop acted in this way because he believed it was the most edifying way for him to act. He didn't choose his actions on what Jean Valjean deserved or what he might do next. We live in a time when very few of our heroes are remarkable for their audacious grace. Our heroes and leaders are tough, smart, sexy, capable, but rarely do they exemplify a better way of living, a better way of being for us to look up to. Rarely do they choose audacious grace to remind themselves and others of our common humanity. It was a moment that changed the course of the uh, the course for one of the characters in the book and profoundly altered me. Books can be mirrors to ourselves, but they can also show us the constellation of who we can be if we try, maybe braver or kinder. When I look at the news or look down the street, I don't see a lot of people acting like this bishop, myself included. But the example in Les Mis at least shows me that it can be done and how it can be done that undeserved radical grace is profoundly changing in both written word and deed. Thank you.